All right, guys, let's do it. Right, we are back and we are here with Kate Stillwell, the founder of Jumpstart. And I am going to, we've got so many things to talk about. And I know you're going to be interested in hearing about how this came to fruition, what this is. I know you've already seen the earthquake experience. Let's go ahead and talk to Kate. Kate, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me today. Thank you, Carl. It's a real pleasure. We're out uh, in Bakersfield, California. The birds are singing. We can smell the orange blossoms. It's beautiful. It, it really is. I was wondering while I was driving here, where am I? <laughs> you just so, keep going and going and going. And I thought, I, I hope I'll be able to recognize when I get there. And I got right here and I saw this. I thought, I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. <laughs> so Kate, start out. Take us to the very beginning. What made somebody decide to literally create a product that didn't exist, especially in a state like California? <laughs> Good question. Thank you. Um, so my first career, I have to back up a little bit farther, is as a structural engineer. So working with architects to design the skeletons of buildings and in particular keep them safe in earthquakes so that people don't die in the, when they're in an earthquake in a building. And in that role, I participated on some committees that create public policy for earthquake and disaster recovery. And I realized that safe buildings are important, but they're only a piece of the puzzle. And there are all these other pieces that contribute to disaster recovery. One of which is making sure there's enough money flowing into the system. What? <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> right. Um, and so I was really inspired to use the time and talents of the engineering community to help s fill this gap, right? And I learned, uh, I just happened, stumbled upon the notion of parametric insurance uh, while we're, I was- We're gonna put a pin in that because yeah. you're gonna get into the details of that for us, but go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I thought, oh, that's what we need. Why don't we have parametric insurance for individuals, for an earthquake? And uh, nobody had done this before. Uh, except in developing countries for farmers in Africa. And I said, well, if they can do it for farmers in Africa, we can do it here in California. And so that's what started me on this journey. All right, now, give me, the, when was that roughly? What year? That was 2006. Wow, 2006, it's amazing. It's a, that seems like another lifetime ago. Yeah. But before we get into that, tell us what is parametric insurance at its core? Right, parametric is an automatic lump sum payment that occurs upon the occurrence of a parameter, thus parametric, a data point that, um, and, is, and once that data happens, the transfer automatically happens. So it's a pre-agreed lump sum that gets transferred upon the occurrence of the data. It sounds almost like blockchain technology when you think about it. You know, zero trust, just it's all automated. It, there's no claims adjusters, there's no gray area. It, it either is or it is not. Yes, exactly. And the no arbitration is actually part of the beauty of it. It's, it's part of the beauty and the simplicity. So in general, someone were to purchase your, this type of a parametric policy and they're able to select how much money they would want. Mm -hmm. Are they able to select what the triggering event is, how strong of an earthquake, how weak, or how does it actually work? How are the mechanics of that? Well, since it's first of a kind, we started simple and we said there's only one trigger. It's you're in or you're out and you can't decide that. You can decide how much money you're going to get afterwards. Um, and then once people get familiar with this idea of this automated lump sum uh, payouts, uh, then as time goes on, there will be more sophisticated products where people will be able to choose their triggers. So deductibles? No, no. It's, no deductible. It just works kind of like gap insurance or like uh, critical illness insurance. There's just this lump sum of money. You get it. That's it. So they purchase a policy, mm -hmm. they purchase the amount of coverage they want to have, mm -hmm. and if the earthquake happens, the triggering event, mm -hmm. then they get a deposit or a check or however the mechanics of that work. Right. It's an automated electronic transfer, and uh, we, if you really need a check, then it's going to take some time and it's not going to be very fast. Right. Uh, but Who do you use? Um, how do you have the pro payments process? Is there an organization or a company that works on that? Yeah, we are thrilled to be working with a company called Snap Refund, which is uh, the, we searched 
far and wide uh, across um, very big companies, very small companies for who can deliver this, proce this payment processing, large dollar lump sums for an insurance policy, and SNAP Refund was the only one who was able to meet all the requirements. So they're the ones that actually get that money to the customer right away. That's the last mile, yep. It can be happen as soon as the same day. Wow. That's, that's unheard of, as I'm sure you know. In the insurance business, to be able to get a check the same day or payment the same day or even the next day is pretty tough. So, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. So, as far as where you are right now, is this a California-only product? Is it any, in any other states? And where, where do you see it right now? It's available in California, Oregon, and Washington. Soon, th within this calendar year, Nevada, Idaho, and Utah. And, you know, the, where there's the most interest for it is in the states that have the earthquakes most frequently. So like that, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You they might be asking know. now who, you know, yeah. you just can't tell. You know, on the, when the earthquakes happen in the east, people can feel them at much longer distances than they feel them here in the west. Right. I was reading about that. It has to do with the, the rock formations and the length of time, blah, blah. I'm, I don't remember the details, but the, yeah, exactly. Fewer mountains point. in the way when the seismic waves travel. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I saw a really cute clip on, I forgot what I was watching, something online where they were showing, here's how someone has an earthquake in, you know, New Jersey. And there was, you know, a little shake and the person's freaking out and screaming and checking his pulse and doing all this and then you know here's in California same guy you know and he and the, the camera is shaking like crazy and he's like honey he's like do you want to go hiking later no I said do you want to go hiking I'm just totally oblivious and just having a conversation so there's there's no question well it's what's interesting about that is in areas that have less frequent earthquakes might actually be a market that is untapped because they're not used to thinking about purchasing insurance when people buy insurance in California earthquake insurance is on their mind just like in Florida flood insurance is probably on their mind so it's, it'll be interesting to see how that growth is working are you seeing the primary flow of business coming from California what is Oregon looking like what, what are some of the other states looking like yeah uh, California and Washington uh, Oregon we're not having a ton of interest uh, but you know Washington is in well, and Oregon but primarily the um, the Seattle area, the Puget Sound area, is in this Cascadia subduction zone. And oh, of course. Back it's in, in the Cascadia subduction zone, in case you didn't know. Okay. <laughs> a lot of big words here. Um, well, this is, you're, you're, you have, this is your background. <laughs> yeah, thank you, though. Um, and, but in 2015, I think it was, there was a famous article in the New Yorker magazine um, where that really brought to light the earthquake risk in the Cascadia subduction zone. Say it with me, Cascadia subduction zone. <laughs> um, and it's, it, the Seattle area is going to be toast. And that really brought a ton of awareness to the folks in the Pacific Northwest about the earthquake risk there. And there's still even lingering effects almost a decade later wow. about uh, the, the, the earthquake risk in the Pacific Northwest. I lived in Portland in Oregon for, for a few years and earthquake insurance was just not even on the menu. I, I remember I was as a kid, my parents weren't even concerned about pictures hanging above our beds. It was, oh, we're in Oregon now, there's no problem. Well, whereas growing up in Southern California, everything was about what's held down and what's not above your head and what to pay attention for. So this concept of having something automated, of having something be triggered by something that's an agreed upon measurable objective item, it creates the speed for you to be able to get these payments out. It also, I would think, would create the ability for you to have less infrastructure because you don't need to have a ton of people checking reports and going out and assessing damage. How are you seeing that translate into your ability to grow without having to have, I assume, that type of infrastructure? Yeah, 100%. And not having less overhead means that we can pass along the savings to the customer. So that means that the price that the customers would be paying for something like this is much lower than they would be paying if there were um, adjusters coming and there are lots more paperwork administration. All right, now we're, we're sitting in front of the, the shaker. What do you, what's, what's, what's the affectionate name for this trailer? Yeah, the Jumpstart Shaker. It's the Jumpstart Shaker, yes. okay. Now, what was the genesis for you deciding to do this? I mean, there are lots of companies that write earthquake insurance. I have not seen one that's gone as far as to create a simulator. What was the, whose idea was this? How did this come to fruition? Oh, uh, this was our, this was the genius of uh, Jumpstart's former chief of marketing, Juan Jamarillo. And he said, you know what? People need to experience 
this capability of getting this text message immediately after the earthquake saying, hey, you're eligible. You just experienced a major earthquake. You're eligible for your 10000 or 20000 or $50,000 that, by the way, you can use for anything you need to recover. You don't have to have physical breakage to your property in order to What if to they have money. no damage? It doesn't matter because a big earthquake is going to cause financial losses to your economy. It's going to cause disruption. It's going to cause extra expenses. It's going to cause school closures, workplace closures, utility outages, all of which cost money. And so you use the money just to recover, just like economic stimulus. It's interesting. So the idea of being able to purchase a policy without having to prove, I won't make air quotes, that there's damage or that you're eligible for it because the consumer doesn't have to prove the earthquake happened. You're measuring that. Exactly. They don't have to justify their due money because here's the damage that you're going to see. They just know it's basically two factors. If this happens, you get this. It's binary. Exactly. So Juan said, we need to show people how intuitive this is, how unlike the regular insurance it is, how unlike people's preconceptions of insurance it is. And so he found John, who built this trailer, and we bought this trailer. John had an extra one, and we bought it. John is a wizard when it comes to lowrider technology. So the, the hydraulic actuators, another big word, um, that, that, one, that one I've on. heard. That one I've heard. Is that <laughs> is what makes it, people when they have their cars bouncing up and down? It's the same technology. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, and so Juan found uh, the John in this trailer, and he said, "We'll take it." And then we took it to uh, community disaster preparedness events. We took it to Fleet Week. We, we've got hundreds of people through this trailer, maybe even thousands of people through this trailer, and uh, and bouncing around and experiencing an earthquake, and then being able to say. Now, if that happened in real life, you would be getting your text message from Jumpstart saying you're eligible for your money. So what approximately is the scale of earthquake that you feel inside of this? What is this designed to simulate? This simulates about a magnitude 7. Okay, about a 7. Mm -hmm. Richter scale? Or Richter, Richter scale. scale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because now, of course, there's more ways to measure than just the Richter scale, right? There, there's one, I think, that goes based specifically on damage. And I was thinking that wouldn't be the right scale for us to be looking at. So Richter scale is pretty much the de facto standard, right? That's what everybody's familiar with. Mm -hmm. Any duration of time, if it hits that peak, that's the trigger. Okay. So the trigger for a jumpstart policy is technically 30 centimeters per second of ground velocity. But that doesn't mean anything to anyone. You're, I'm glad she said it first. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but it's the piece of data that comes through to us from the U.S. Geological Survey, from the public agency that, that records these things. But what that corresponds to is the smallest Richter magnitude that that corresponds to is going to be a magnitude 6. So for a magnitude 6, you're going to have 30 centimeters per second in a pretty small area. For magnitude 7, it's going to be like across multiple cities, maybe even counties. And for a magnitude 8, it's going to be like half the state. Right. And so do you, it, how do you identify if someone was affected by that? You can tell mathematically if you know where the fault or you, you know where the epicenter is, you're able to extrapolate from that if a customer is in the affected area? Great question. The U.S. Geological Survey publishes the data points at a one kilometer grid of what the velocity was at that point. So then that creates a contour, a uh, one kilometer pixelated contour. And if ever, and anybody who's inside the contour is eligible. Okay, so it's a third party, USGS, yep. that's actually giving you that data. So people, again, don't have to worry that you're putting your thumb on the scale at some point because oh. you're getting the data from a third party. Yes, this public source that cannot be gamed. And who wouldn't trust California public source? <laughs> It's a federal agency. It's a fe even better. Does that matter? Even better. Yeah. No, I'm I'm being funny, but the fact that it's a, that it's that objective, right? I mean, they have no axe to grind with you either way. Right. If anything, you would think they would try and be like, yeah, yeah, make them pay more money. So <laughs> it, it, that's a good thing. So, Kate, talk to us about the future. You you have you've seen the success of JumpStart. Where do you see this going as far as JumpStart goes? As far as other states or other products go? Right. Well, we talked about the other states. In terms of other products, Jumpstart is really at the cusp of it becoming a new category because it fills a different mental bucket in people's brains than typical insurance because it's just this if-then, no arbitration, complete fairness. And so, you know, a decade or a generation from now, parametric insurance will be for anything and everything, not just 
earthquakes, not just all natural disasters, but anything that can be measured and that has a very distinct uh, binary trigger, yes or no, did it happen or not. And so Jumpstar was acquired in 2021 by Neptune Flood, and partly because Neptune is very bullish on the future of parametric, uh, particularly for floods, because flood is a big protection gap. Absolutely, it is for sure. Have there been, have you been able to test the process from start to finish? I'm trying to think of how long we've known each other, a long time. If there's been an earthquake for, for the process to go through, for payments to go out, has that, have, have you gone through the whole process yet? Yes and no. So we know that the system works because there has been an earthquake, which is the Ridgecrest earthquake of 2019, since Jumpstart has been live. But we didn't have any customers in Ridgecrest at that time because we had just launched the product in earlier in 2018, so less than a year. And uh, a week after the earthquake, we did have customers in Ridgecrest. I bet you did. But, we, but it did test the whole automation process, except for the process of getting the last mile of getting the money to folks. But the communications protocols, the connection to the USGS, and all of that. So you got the information that said, time to pay if you have anyone, there mm -hmm. was just no one. Right. Well, see, this is what I tell everyone, like with life insurance, just buy life insurance and the carrier will always win. You'll live forever. So maybe if, if people just buy Jumpstart Quake, they'll just never be in an earthquake, which sounds like a great deal to me. Can you can you yeah, guarantee us something like that? How much would you pay to never be in an earthquake? A lot. A lot, especially if you've been in one. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. What I'd love to do is what do you say we take a little walk inside the shaker? And, and see what it's and see what it's like in there. All right. All right. If experience an earthquake. Let's do it. All right, Kate. Are you ready? Show me the way. Okay. All right, Kate. So we gave them the green light. We don't know, just like in real life, when there might be an earthquake. We don't we're know. Just, we're just schmoozing. We're just hanging out. We're, we're chuckling here and we're laughing because we're sitting in a trailer and we knew this was coming. But this is not fun. This is very jarring and you can only imagine if it was unexpected and you're in your home and things are flying around and, and falling. Right, and your neck is like going back and forth like mine was, like yeah. you're on a roller coaster. Yeah, it is like you're on a roller coaster, except there are things flying around yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So can you give us an idea, what, what, is, what should people do? They're sitting there and this starts happening what is the first thing that people should do? I remember growing up and it was what, drop, tuck, cover, and they keep changing it. So what is the what is the best thing that they're saying right now? Drop, cover, and hold on. And so I'm gonna demonstrate that. And the reason that you drop first is so that, because it, it's a lot easier to crawl to a place where you can cover your head than it is to try to walk because you'll be like- Plus things are flying, right, you're exactly. a bigger target. Okay, so again, I'm going to be the idiot that just sits here and grins like a like a nerd, and Kate's going to show us whenever this earthquake comes where what to actually do. Wow, that was a, that lasts a long time. That's a that's a big one. Yeah. Now. What could happen next? The earthquake is done, but as we all know, that doesn't use that almost certainly does not mean you will not feel another shake at a point soon. When is it safe to come out? And what about aftershocks? Safe to come out from under the desk when you feel the shaking stop. But aftershocks can happen at any time and they're most common. They're most common Cute. in the first 24 hours. Okay. Yeah, but they can continue happening for a year or more. A year or more. Yep. And what is the likelihood of it happening within, say, 10 minutes, five minutes? I remember from the Northridge earthquake, we had some pretty substantial ones while we were still in the pitch black, wondering what in the world just happened. Yeah, you could have uh, shocks in the next five, 10 minutes. And sometimes what feels like the first, what sometimes the first shock is a four shock to what ends up being the main shock. So it's a smaller earthquake that precedes what ends up being the bigger earthquake. So if you're lucky and you get that one, you can get covered and protected before the actual shaking, the real shaking starts. Possibly, unlikely. No, is because, it? Because uh, if there's a big enough earthquake at first, then uh, 
um, then there might be a moratorium. But if it's a small earthquake first... Oh, I mean covered, like, get undercover. Go, oh, not by a policy. I thought you meant insurance. No. Okay, yeah. oh, well, of course, everybody wants to call the minute there's an earthquake and get right. coverage. No, I actually meant get covered, okay, like, get, get safe. Get your head protected, covered. Protected, yeah. Get protected, yes, exactly. Okay, so that's a good thing. Yeah, for sure. That's a good thing. Yeah. Kate, I think that this is definitely going to be a part of the future for a lot of different insurance products because I think, like you said, there is a definite desire for objectivity when it comes to claims and for people to know exactly what it is they have and exactly what it is to expect and and the fact that they have the ability to see objectively that this is something that would be covered and, and where to go to check. Again, this is definitely an area that I think people are, are interested in finding and there is no one else doing this. That's what I keep saying. You are you are the one to do this. And so you are the one to watch to see what, what is going to be coming next. And I appreciate you taking the time to, to shake it up a little bit here. And exactly. And I look forward to, to chatting again and to continuing to watch you keep growing. Thank you, Carl. Really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.